Hi guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. So super excited for today's video. I am going to be reviewing the brand new Jeffree Star Bloodlust eyeshadow palettes. I'm going to be giving you two looks, this look and another look that's 10 times more incredible than this one. <laughs> and I'm also going to show you two of the new glosses that I also picked up from this collection. So if you want to hear my thoughts, get some inspiration for some looks, then just keep watching. So first of all, huge thank you to my mother. If you don't know, I'm a full-time teacher. So I was working today when this palette released and my mom drove to the Morphe store and she waited in line in the morning and picked this up for me and the two glosses. I'm forever thankful for you, mom. So my mother is the reason that I am able to film this for you today. As soon as I got home from work today, I just started filming. So I'm actually really tired but this palette has given me a lot of energy at the same time. As far as Jeffree Star goes here on my channel, we really only talk about makeup, not the drama. I know a lot of people have a lot of opinions about Jeffree Star, but honestly, I'm about the makeup and his makeup is pretty darn cool. Like you can't deny that his makeup is really truly art and very unique in the industry and he does a fantastic job. And also I really, really love purple. So <laughs> this one was right up my alley. Let's just get into the details. I'm gonna stop jibber jabbering. The first thing we're gonna talk about is the bloodlust palette this is the big release here in this collection it is $54 if you're going to purchase this online I definitely recommend purchasing it from Beautylish make sure you turn my post notifications on because when they restock on those I always post on my community tab products that I think you guys would be interested in so that way you can just get a notification and it'll pop up hey this palette's available I will get, let you guys know because obviously this is sold out you can also buy it at morphe or jeffreestarcosmetics.com but as far as online goes, definitely go Beautylish. Great customer service. Their website doesn't mess up all the time and they ship super fast. Anyways, $54. I also picked up two of the glosses in the collection. Now he did release five glosses in the collection. I only picked up two. These are $18 each. In the collection, he also has mirrors, a mini purple bundle of his little liquid lipsticks, which I never purchased those to be honest. They just aren't colors I would ever use. And then he also has a few other accessories. But as far as the makeup goes, I picked up the lip glosses that I liked the most and the palette. So let's get deep into this palette. I believe it's a hexagon. Oh my gosh, if it's not, I'm gonna sound so dumb right now. Here is what the box looks like. Again, like I said, art so well thought out. And then you open it, and then on the inside is going to be this beautiful velvet palette. Such a unique concept. This is so Jeffree Star. A little tacky, but I love it. Yes, it's super soft. Such a unique palette. A very weird shape, though. I'm not really here for the shape because it does not fit anywhere, but that is why it's more of an art piece than anything. Made in the USA, and just so you know, on the back, I really like he brings attention to which colors are the pressed pigments because that's a hot topic nowadays. I think sometimes the word pressed pigment can be thrown around to kind of justify a crappy shadow and don't come for me I'm just being honest so there are pressed pigments in this you get a very large mirror it's quite a weighty palette and then you have 18 eyeshadows here on the inside and there's even a design in this empty space again I really just hate the shape of this palette I hate all of the empty space that's here I personally feel like a palette with all this extra space almost cheapens it I don't know why I just I don't like that but whatever I mean it's still a very interesting design very unique and then you have your 18 shades. Obviously this is a very purpley theme which I was here for. You will notice there are some pops of other random colors but honestly when I really took a deep dive into these colors I feel like all of them are complementary colors to purple even if they're not purple. The only kind of wild cards I would say would be this shade and this shade here and I showed you how I utilize them in my first tutorial and I guess you could say this shade as well but honestly I find red and more warm tone purples are just such a good combo. For the most part, I think this is a very well-rounded purple palette. So as far as swatching goes, and I know a lot of people say you can't tell anything from the formula when you swatch. Personally, I feel like I can. It tells me how to apply the shadow and I had no problems with swatching. So if you are a swatch believer, 
these shadows swatched really well. The shadows that were kind of patchy, I felt like were Vile Serpent and Blood Queen. I'm assuming those are definitely pressed pigments. And definitely with application, I noticed they were a bit more patchy, but I really didn't have problems with them. They laid down a really nice color and I, they were relatively easy to work with. But yeah, overall, the swatches on here, very impressive, extremely gorgeous. As far as the finishes in here go, you are getting 11 mattes, which is really great. I love a palette that has a lot of mattes. Normally that makes it easier to create a lot of different looks with a lot of different dimension. Four shades are shimmer. Three shades are a really wet glittery formula, which is more of like a cream. And you'll hear me explain it in my demo. And then you have one matte that's filled with a lot of glitter. That is the executioner. And I'm going to be honest, I didn't use this one today, but he did say in his video that the glitters do show up in the black. They're going to stay in the black and they'll show up on your eye. I can't speak for that personally, but just seeing how much glitter is in this eyeshadow, I would agree with that. And then quickly to go over the gloss shades that I picked up, I picked up Sorcery, which is a light clear gloss. It's kind of like a light lilac with some gold and purple glimmers in them. And then we, I also picked up Wizard's Glass, which this is quite hard to explain just by looking at it. It has a mauve plum base, but it's not super pigmented with gold, pink, purple, blue, just colors of the rainbow reflex inside. It's actually what I'm wearing right now. It's really gorgeous. It's not as intimidating as it looks in the tube, but those are the two lip glosses that I picked up. And by the way, I love his lip gloss packaging. Just super extra. I mean, duh. So I think that explains the major, major details about these products. So I'm just going to go straight into the demo so you can see how everything applies. We have two looks. The first look is going to be a really intricate look. The second look is going to be this look, which is a lot more simple, a lot more on theme with the palette. So let's just get into it. All right. So this is going to be what we are going to recreate on this side. I'm really excited about it. Starting off with Your Majesty. This shade is so super powdery so just be aware of that and be ready to tap your brush off this is the perfect bone shade for a purple palette because it has a little bit of gray to it which is really complementary to purple tones i'm just popping that right underneath my eyebrow and now we're going to do monarch i tried to stick to a lot of the non-traditional purple colors in this palette for the first look just to play with those and this color though is actually the perfect transition shade for an everyday purple look because it is a cool cool toned very light taupe so it's going to be very pretty under any purples that you put underneath and it's a really light shade super pretty going in with royal pain royal pain is just going to warm this look up and this actually is also very complementary to purple tones it looks like it's kind of a misfit color but once you put it on if you love a warm under base this is a great transition shade to go for and as you can see it's blending beautifully smoke that out this way next we're taking high king i'm actually quite impressed with this color i think it's really stunning and it's quite easy to work with as well i'm using a refer po73 which is the perfect tiny little crease brush to squeeze in here and again kind of smoke it out here to stretch your eye out we're going to go back with this color but i'm taking vile serpent be very careful with this shade i'm just laying down the base layer and as you can see super pigmented this is definitely a misfit color in this palette probably the one of the most unique i definitely think it can be pulled together very pretty in a purple look but i think at first glance it does take a little bit of thinking as far as incorporating it into to the other colors in this palette. So I go in pretty close to that inner part of my eye and I'm taking High King again. We're gonna work on blending this edge out. Use this blue to kind of deepen. Now I'm going to cut my crease really quickly. I'm using the P. Louise base to cut it and a Refer P21 brush. This is gonna take me some time. It's been a long time since I've done a cut crease so I thought this was the perfect palette to do that with. So I for sure knew I had to play with Swarm or an enemy one of those unique colors i think that and vile serpent look really good together now the consistency of this shadow is very spongy it's kind of like a super shock shadow from color pop and where you push it in you don't get crumbles from this palette it just the shadow just presses in it's like a bouncy shade so you need to apply it with the finger which i find difficult for cut creases because it's really hard to get close to that line and this 
particular formula does not agree with brushes. I tried a natural hair brush, I tried synthetic brush, and it just was a lot of work to get it. So natural hair, absolutely not. Synthetic's a little bit better, but I just kind of had to lightly press and build it with a brush because there's no way I'm going to get into this detailed area. So this formulation, as far as doing this type of detail work, is not easy. The shadow isn't bad, but it's really, it's not a powder. So it's not good for this type of detail work because you really just should only apply it with your finger. Also something to know about the shadow, and now I know for sure it's this, this shadow. It kind of makes my eyelid burn <laughs> and that rarely happens to me. Um, I noticed it on the other eye, but I wasn't too sure what it was, but there's something about the ingredients in this that is kind of making my eye burn. It does go away, like it's gone away on this eye, so hopefully this goes away as well, but something to note if you have very sensitive eyes, and I don't, and I feel a little bit of burning going on. And now I'm going to go back into that vile serpent, and we're going to make the shade pop again. And it's not super easy to blend these two shades together, but definitely do what you can. I find that just kind of moving the shimmer over is going to help blend these two together. So I definitely wanted to play with some more of the purples. So I went into Blood Queen, which is a very vibrant purple shade right here. And I thought this would be a fun way to incorporate some more purple tones by just sneaking that right at the very edge a vile serpent just for that little purple pop isn't that cool I'm so happy i did that then make sure you blend it and then on the lower lash line i'm taking high king and i'm kind of making this a little bit more smoky then make sure you kind of blend this area out too i feel like this is a very lipstick nick kind of thing to do i'm taking a more precise brush and i'm going into blood queen which is that purple that we used out here and i'm gonna kind of pull the look together with this and then we're taking a touch of vile serpent i'm gonna run that on the lower lash line i don't want too much of that so i'm gonna kind of wipe it off on my hand my eyes watering right here so that's what that weird thing is for the inner corner we're gonna take beauty sleep first and then we're gonna layer wet jewel on top so i just want to show you this is what beauty sleep looks like and then it's really gonna pop with some of wet jewel on there boom stunning all right liner and lashes and we'll put this whole look together so so far this is what look number one is looking like i freaking love it and i wanted to show you the gloss sorcery and what that looks like so what's on my lips right now is the pat mcgrath done undone lip liner which is like a pretty close match to my regular lips i just want to show Oh, it has a very nice gloss formula. This is really fun for purple looks. You really get that purple reflex. So this is the first look. I'm going to go off, take some photos, and take this all off for look number two. So this next look, I'm not going to lie, it's not really my favorite. Like that first look was everything. This one's a little bit more simple. More so, I tried to use colors that I hadn't used yet. So I wanted to do a really simple, soft purple look and also use colors that I didn't dip into that first time. So we're going to start off with Deviant right here. Oh. This is a pastel purple and honestly, you guys, I am so impressed with this shade. It has really wonderful pigmentation. As you can see, for being such light pastel color, it, there is kick up, but it's not chalky. It's a really nice color, really beautiful formula. I am so impressed with this palette so far, you guys. I can't lie. Next, we're going to take Scandal Water right here. This is a super unique periwinkle purple kind of shade. I really, really love it. And again, working beautifully. It's blending beautifully. I'm going to blend this right in the middle of my eye. Working out very beautifully. Super vibrant. And then I had to take some of Dungeon. A lot of times, this type of color can be very difficult to work with and while I wouldn't say it's the easiest color to work with in this palette I am still quite impressed with how it works I always like the way I do this eye better than the way I do the other eye because it's my second go around so if they look a little bit different I'm like changing up my technique a little bit to make it look better okay and then take that original brush and go over everything to make it look more blended these three shades super cool toned purple look very impressed with how they look. Now I'm taking some of Take the Crown right here, right on the beginning of 
the lid. I think this right here is where I like the look. I did do something on this other side that you'll see a second, but this is the kind of look that I like. So I'm just gonna put that everywhere and then I'm going to take my blending brush and kind of smooth that out, work it into those mats, make everything more cohesive. And so this is where I didn't like what I did with the look, but I have to do it because I had to play with this formula. So I took some of Pink Magic, and this is a similar texture to this shade over here where it's that pushy, cushy kind of formula, but this one seems extra, extra wet than this one. This one does seem a little bit more dry, and I really love this color. I think it is stunning. However, I think it looks better with a more warm purple toned kind of look, not necessarily so cool toned. Dang, that was a lot more vibrant than it appeared on the other eye because I kind of dug in too hard. So I'm going to kind of try and blend this out to match this eye. And by the way, with it being the same formula as that other shade, I don't notice my eyelids burning. So I don't know if it was because it was packed on in such a tight area, but as far as like this blown out kind of application, it's not irritating my eyes. The more I think about it, I don't think it was actually the shadow that made my eyelid burn. I think it was the P. Louise base. I'm not 100% sure. I will have to report back to you, but there's a chance that that shadow was fine and it was the base. It's, it's one or the other. I'm not sure. And then as far as the under eyes goes, I'm just layering the same mattes that I used up here. We do have some fallout. So nothing too bad though. Just kind of brushes away. I'm going to layer these mattes. And then finally, once again, we're taking Wet Jewel. Ugh, I love this shade so much. I should have put this all over the lid instead of the other one, but I really wanted to see what that one looked like. So I wanted to keep this look kind of more simple and blown out compared to that first look. So I'm gonna do a lashes, liner, and all of that, and we will be back with the final look. Okay, so I'm back, and definitely for sure, before I put the lashes on, I was like, mm not really feeling this look but now with lashes on like this is a really cool look very unique i don't think i've ever done like a purple look that's this tone before super pretty i actually really like it and for gloss i want to show you wizard's glass so obviously there's a lot more lip glosses in the collection but oh this goes perfectly with this look too this is still over that done undone from pat mcgrath purple is definitely the iridescent color that i'm not afraid to wear out there's a lot like blue or green or shifts like that i don't like products that have those shifts for every day but purple i can get down with and i love this it's actually even more wearable than sorcery which you think it wouldn't be but on the lips it's just a hint of purple i really like that all right so i'm gonna put on accessories and finish everything up and We'll be back. All right, so now it's time to collect my thoughts on these products. And if you couldn't tell, I am really enjoying this collection. I think everything I've tried, I've really enjoyed. No, I haven't used every single eyeshadow in this palette, but I definitely plan on it. I feel extremely inspired by this palette. The Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette, though I do like it and it's very pretty, that palette doesn't inspire me like this palette inspires me. And I know it's a weird thing because that one has so many shades, but honestly, there's something about this that makes me super excited to use it. Just the cohesion of everything makes it easy for me to think of a look, but those pops of colors also do make me think outside of the box. I think every color in here has a purpose for being in here. I really feel the cohesion between all of these colors. Even the colors that you wouldn't think you would want to put in a purple palette, they work well with each other and it makes sense. So even though this isn't like as on theme as say blue blood, it's pretty dang good and once you really dive in, I think you will see how well these go together and how complementary they are. Um, application, I had little to no issues with any of the shades that I used. I was actually even more impressed than I was expecting to be. Purple is a hard formula and I feel like you really mastered it with a lot of these shades. I love the different textures and dimensions that you can get with this palette as well. Very impressed with the pigmentation of this pastel shade here and just honestly all the shades. The pigmentation was incredible and blendability I didn't have much issues with. The only color I would say I sort of struggled with, which I expect was Vile Serpent and that's with any brand to be honest. It's a difficult color to work with but it did lay down quite a pop of color so I am still impressed with it. The shimmers are gorgeous. I love the colors he chose. The only thing I have to say is this shade made my eye burn a little. The burning sensation did eventually go away but I've never had an eyeshadow do that before so there's something in this formula that my eyes disagree with but that was only when I was packing it on. When I went in with this shade or this shade I did not notice any burning sensations. So I think something about packing.
lacking at all and irritated my lid. I don't know. And I just didn't like that when I was doing my cut crease, these shades are difficult to pick up on a brush for more precision. But if you're just using them with your finger all over, they're stunning. So overall, I definitely, I'm giving this palette a 10 out of 10. I really love it. It is a beautiful palette. You can create so many beautiful looks. If I have time, I am thinking about doing a separate video of just creating more looks with this palette because I do feel so inspired by it. And I'm not saying that to kiss anybody's butt because I have trash talked some Jeffree products before. Like Blue Blood was not a good palette. His Morphe collaboration, horrible. This is a good palette. As far as the glosses go, I already know that I do enjoy his formula. I'm actually quite in love with Wizards Gloss. It's actually a very wearable way to have like a purple duochrome on your lips. As far as Secretary goes, this is actually a little bit more of a vibrant purple. I'm going to layer this on top. They are more sheer. Yeah, you see instantly that purple duochrome became much stronger. But these are going to be super fun over like a pink lipstick or if you have a mauve lipstick, something to really spice it up. But I think these are really fun if you're not into those purpley duochrome kind of lip shades though I would stay far far away from these because there is a non-wearable aspect to them but like I said wizard's glass there is something wearable about it that you can have just a hint of purple but I do really like these I think they're really fun I think they fit into the collection very well and I'm happy with the colors and by the way the texture or consistency of his glosses is not sticky it's a little bit more thick but not sticky it's very comfortable and very moisturizing I'm gonna leave this video at that obviously I love everything very very much so let me know your thoughts down below about this collection. Are you in love with it like I am? I might be biased because purple is my favorite color, but I could argue I think this might be my favorite palette he's ever come out with. Well, I really like Jawbreaker a lot too. I don't know, but this is one of my favorites at least. <laughs> so anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you are not yet subscribed to my channel, I sure hope you take the time to do so. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys, have a good one.